All right, well, hey, thank you guys for joining us uh, today for this Man Up uh, Mount Kilimanjaro Reunion Roundtable, is what we're calling this, and uh, excited to have you guys here and just discuss the trip and how amazing it was for us. And, uh, you know, not a, not a big format, just kind of want to have it free-flowing. So um, my name is Jeff Ford. I am the CEO of Man Up and Go, and um, got a couple board members here and just real tremendous champions uh, at this table. So excited that you're here. We don't have everybody. We're missing about half the crew because they're all scattered over the USA, uh, but excited about who is here. So first question I want to ask you guys is kind of the big one, which is, hey, Why'd you do this? Why did you go out, raise $10,000 to go punish yourself uh, with no oxygen uh, and tons of training on top of Kilimanjaro? Like, the question is why? And why would someone else want to do this? But, but for you, why, why'd you do it? Maybe Gonzo, what, what do you think? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think, for me, I was um, tricked into it <laughs> at the, at the uh, Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> I, uh, I remember that. Yeah. Yes, that's the first time I met Dan, and you were sitting next to me, and Jason graciously invited us, and then said, "Hey, we should all do Killy," and uh, there we went. <laughs> so peer pressure. Absolutely, I didn't know anything about it. I was like, "Sure, Killy." Yeah. It's the guy that wore shorts the whole way up the mountain. <laughs> yeah. True. It was warm. True. True. I think I think it's 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 really about another uh, another guy saying, "Hey, man, did you want to check this out?" I think uh, that was Raul for me, and uh, it kind of really aligned with what I was doing here locally. So you know, I I run a charity called Tampa Urban Young Life here, which fights for fatherless here in the states, and. Um, when I heard about Kilimanjaro, and he's like, come on, man, it'll be easy, no big deal, right? So um, I was like, but I've never been camping before. He's like, you'll be fine, man, it's fine, right? And, uh, and really, it was uh, one of the greatest experiences, definitely the greatest travel trip of, uh, of my life. Um, uh, and uh, I am just so happy that I went because um, not just the relationships with you guys, but the relationships with the Lord, and then just seeing what Man Up was doing uh, in the communities, changing the narrative of um, trying to help uh, you know, families come together, trying to help the men understand what their God-given purpose is to take care of their family, to honor their wife, to, and, 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 and all the good work that's going on over there because of Man Up. So it was, it was an awesome experience. That's cool. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I remember uh, vividly, it was, I think I just came back from Ethiopia and I was telling you about the experience we had over there for two weeks. And Didn't you climb some mountains over there? We did. Yeah. Not, not, quite the <laughs> <laughs> not quite the training required as Killy, but I remember just coming back and I said, you know, I, I was just over there and just, you know, plug takes you out of this society and you just see everything over there and you're in the moment the whole time. And I said, you know, I just felt like I had to do something. And I think, oh, I have something for you. And of course, then I couldn't say no. And I said, I'm in, and then you know, I had to sell it to my wife. But you know, when <laughs> she found out that Jason was going, you know, that, that helped. And then it was funny how, how uh, you know, I knew Matt, I didn't know, I knew you, and Raul knew both, both of you. And it was kind of funny how, you know, all the connections, you know, with the group we had, which just was really what made it special. Yeah. What about you guys? Yeah, I've, I mean, We've been friends for a long time. This has always been a bucket list thing yeah. for me. I remember in 2014, coming back from Africa, and we were about ready to shut down, man. Up. Man Up wasn't even an official thing at that time. Yeah. And we're like, man, we can't shut it down. He's like, and next time we're coming over, we're hitting Killy on the way. <laughs> and that was in 2014. I, I distinctly remember that on the flight. Yeah, you know, I think we're created, right, to A, be in relationship, but B, just to take on challenges, right, and accomplish things. And when you get to do it with... Guys, some of what you didn't know before, but when you get to accomplish something as a team, right? Which that was Dan's mantra the whole way up as my tent mate. The whole way up the mountain is the team, the relationships, and man, it was fun from the minute we committed, right? And you're like, well, let's just do Killy. Let's do a trip. All right. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> yes. Just say yes. And from the minute that happened to when um, people started coming on board and then training, because, I mean, you're anxious. You're like, we're going to be at 19,300 feet, and you live in Florida, Michigan, Iowa, right, California at sea level, right, not in the mountains. 
it's like, man, how do you even train for this thing? And to be able to do it together and then have every single guy, you know, make it to the top, um, that was like this crescendo moment, right? Celebrating coming back down. Um, but the real reason I did it, not just for the challenge, but it's because I love the ministry. I love the man up and go ministry and organization. And hindsight, the best part of the trip was the second week, right. right? When we got to go see the impact that Man Up is making in Africa and to see where the dollars we had just raised to do this epic adventure, um, the impact that they were making, it was, I mean, it was out of this world. It was, it was a like once in a lifetime, but we're going back to do it again, yeah. twice in a lifetime <laughs> opportunity. <Exactly. laughs> I mean, and that's part of you know, my journey there, right? Uh, Jeff came into to the office and, and I'm, I'm, I, I see him and he says, I'm thinking of this, Kelly trip, you know, and, I'm, and immediately my ears perked up. What, what do you mean? And he's talking about the trip and how it's raising funds for orphans and widows in Africa and man up and go. And I remember thinking to myself and going home saying, man, that's something I want to do. Like, that's, that's in here. I want to do it. So, but I just had our fourth baby was on the way. My wife just opened a school. So I'm like, how am I going to tell my wife <laughs> that I'm taking two weeks off <laughs> to go do this? And I'm like, this is just not going to fly. But um, can I just... Yeah. So anybody watching, no excuse. This guy, <laughs> this guy was able to do it. <laughs> so uh, I went home, <laughs> and I tell my wife, like, hey, this is what's happening. This is a trip. And I'm just expecting a no. Like, no, we, we just can't. This is not the time. Maybe at another time. And she looks at me, and she's like, yeah, you have to do this. And I'm like, what? It's like, don't you remember? So my wife, do some, we do some goal setting and stuff. So for like five years prior, I had just randomly put, I want to climb mountains. And she looked at me, remember when you wrote that down? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, then it was for you. Now it's for a much bigger purpose. You have to do this. And that's what I was in. As soon as she said that, I was like, this is why I love her. <laughs> I am in. I called, Je I, I don't even know if I, I finished dinner. I'm like, Jeff, I'm in. I'm I in. I guess. <laughs> you were like the quickest commit. Like other, other than Jason. Well, that day, I went home that day yeah. and she said that. I'm like, this is crazy. I don't want her to change her mind. <laughs> so I'm like, babe, I already committed now. <laughs> I'm in. Lock it up. Yeah, yeah. lock it up before she changes her mind now. Well, but that was it. I mean, I just, just that, yes, it was an adventure. Yes, it's a challenge. Yes, all that stuff that we have inside of us, but it's for something so much bigger than that. And that was cool. Yeah, so I'm going to keep with you because I know, so I, all you guys know, we work out 5 a.m. every day. We've got the 5 a.m. club. And so leading up for training, of course, we live in Florida. So how on earth are you supposed to train for oxygen? You can't train for, you know, climbing. We could climb the, the whatever, the that bridge is over. Oh, golf course. <laughs> yeah, go, go to Innisbrook. <laughs> the only hills in Pinellas County. Um, but talk about the training role that, and a couple of the other guys, what did you do to train? Like, if you're going to sign up for this trip, what do you need to do? And maybe, maybe what, not what you need to do, but what did you do? Yeah. And maybe it was a lot, maybe it wasn't. But I know what you did because I was with you most of those mornings. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, realistically looking at this, like the biggest thing that we have to do, like anybody who's going to go on this trip, the biggest thing is you have to get your feet ready. <laughs> So it's pounding the feet. Like you have to get, a, get some weight on and actually do the walking. Because I don't think that the actually, like people can do the mountain. Like you can do that. Yes, there's some training involved. But the biggest thing, if your feet give, if you start to get you know, feet that are achy and hurting and stuff, like, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get up, right? So that's the first thing. We would do our workouts. And then right after, put some weight on. And we'd go, what, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour? I mean, nothing crazy or extreme. But um, just getting, getting the feet ready. After that, um, we also... <laughs> We tried a lot of things. <laughs> Some of the things we tried, probably not the smartest things, but um, Jeff and I would like hold our breath and sprint as long as we can, holding our breath. Um, we tried oxygen masks, deprivation masks. Yeah, yeah. We tried... Uh, Wim, Hof, Wim Hof breathing. Wim Hof breathing. That is actually a game. And that, that I mean, was could, a game changer You can for speak me. to that. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I never... This guy, Wim Hof, uh, you guys know I talked to him. He's what got me up the mountain. Like, I'm not kidding you. Those times where I was starting to feel out of breath or a little lightheaded or nauseous, I would just go, I would do my Wim Hof breathing. So it's gut, chest, head. I get like three of those breaths in, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, I feel better. I was getting oxygen to the brain. Now, maybe it was all placebo. I have no <laughs> idea. But I know this. In training, I held my breath for five minutes and 15 seconds, Yeah, crazy. which is crazy. So I do think, if nothing else psychologically it prepared me um, a little bit. And I think some of the training, like, like Jason, I think you, you did a lot of underwater swimming, right? Yeah. I think that's one of the things I would have incorporated more. Yeah. Because you, you were strong. 
<laughs> you were strong on that melon. <laughs> no, I, was, I think I was following your lead. But um, yeah, I did a lot of training. So we work out at a CrossFit gym together. And so that's a good you know, hit training, right? Interval training, high intensity training. Um, and get the legs strong, right? Because the truth is, it's a hike, right? Like it's just a long hike until the last night. Mm -hmm. Then the last night, you're at altitude. And it's about having enough red blood cells, you know, in to your recover. bloodstream yeah. and having the legs strong enough when you don't have as much going through to just be able to squat your way up. You know, there was that one, yeah. that one traverse, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but man, those switchbacks, like <laughs> a thousand switchbacks, yeah. right, going up. And then there's a big climb. And then from there, you're at like 19,000 feet or 18 or something. And it's just like a slow, gradual climb. Um, so I, you know, there's that website about training for Killy also that was really good. And I just gained confidence by reading that stuff and being like, okay, people have done this. Like, yeah. Killy's massive and it's huge. And when you start and you see it way off in the distance, you're like, how are in four days are we gonna be up at the top of that thing? But it's like, man, you just put one foot in front of the other, right, each day. And then that last night, put one foot in front of the other, breathe in, breathe out. And um, yeah, I just did a lot of, I did a lot of swimming underwater to try to explain the, the blood count. Yeah. That was my thing. And then following Gonzo's lead in the gym. Yeah, I think you said it. I mean, it was really just about getting your, your lungs ready. I mean, we, here in Florida especially, we're not going to train for altitude, right? But um, just getting your lungs ready. So I, you know, I, I ran a little bit. I didn't swim just because... I sink. Wait, ran? <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, run a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I ran a little bit. You know, I, 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 I used the ran boots every while, once in a while yeah. just to get used to the boots. <laughs> I make sure I didn't have uh, blisters on the mountain. But to Jason's point, I mean, it's four days of just hiking, just a nice hike. And I think everybody should know that because I think people think we're climbing a mountain, there's going to be climbing. It's not technical. Yeah, you don't, you don't yeah. have to do any of that yeah. at Kili. Kili's actually pretty fun to do yeah. as a beginner. If, if, it's, not, it's a huge mountain. But it's a beginner mountain, yeah. if you think yeah. about it. Beautiful. And it, and it was awesome. Um, so until that last day. And that, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was fine until that last day. <laughs> but that was because of the altitude. Yeah. It had nothing yeah, to yeah. do, because you felt, once you got to the bottom, you're oh, like. Oh, I was fine. Uh, yeah, it had yeah. nothing to do with Gonzo ripping up the mountain past everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. because he was too impatient to wait. I was <laughs> nauseous. <laughs> what? what did they keep saying? Delirious. Pole, pole. Yeah, pole, pole. Yeah, no. Um, from a training perspective, though, honestly, I just think people need to get their lungs ready and get their legs strong. And then from there on out, it's just time. Because we, we pause every time we're tired. Yeah. You know? So it's not like, hey, we got to get there by this right. time. You know, it's like, we have all day to get to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Yeah. I, I trained. Um, you know, people were scared of me because I'd be wearing like, uh, you know, a hooded sweatshirt with a backpack and like hiking boots. Like, walking through the park at night. You know, it's like, oh, who, who is this guy? What is he doing? Or like walk stairs in the, uh, in the parking garages, you know? And so that, that, that prepared me. One thing though, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys. Um, so right before the trip, um, and, and so Dan being the army guy, we trained a little bit, but Dan was, talked in depth about rashes because you can get, you know, rashes or when you, when you don't change your socks or all this other stuff. Well, the week before I, we left, I had this rash that started on my leg. I remember that. And then the rash <laughs> came, like, then I was like, oh, I'll be fine. Like, the next day, it was all over both my legs. <laughs> and I was like, I got to go to the doctor. So I go to the doctor, I get some steroids, and I take that, and like, That's what got you up the mountain. No, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's there's it. There's an asterisk. That's, that's it, exactly right? <laughs> Peds, Peds. <laughs> I admitted openly on camera about the Peds, guys. Uh, so, I, so, so I took them, I'm like, it's still not going away. They give me cream, it's not going away. So I board the flight, so I'm like, I don't know, God, should I be going? Are you trying to tell me not to go? Like, what's the deal? And I board the flight, and I still had the rash on both of my legs, and I was like, man, this is messed up. Like, this isn't gonna work out. Yeah, I just wanna let you know, I would have loved to have known that as your tent mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would have loved to have known this, okay? Yeah, I exactly. I kept, I kept that hush hush. But really, it was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was like, there's no way I'm not going. You know, I trained, we did all this effort, whatever, I'm not, not going, you know? And so the first day that we actually got to the first camp, my rashes started to go down. But it was like, but that whole time, you know, I felt like that was a that was like a testing, like, hey man, holding me up because what what I experienced after 
that kind of crisis. And then I'm like on the mountain and it starts to go, I'm like, oh man, I'm so glad I pushed through that, you know? Um, and it was uh, obviously one of the greatest trips of my life. So it was let's, let's talk about the mountain and Dan, I'll start with you. Um, so we get in there, the way we did it, there was a day to acclimate, which I thought we all agreed was a good way to do it. Um, and then we get up on the mountain and we're getting all geared up and then it starts raining like right away. And I just, I, I remember it was on the video and I, looking at you <laughs> and you're in your poncho and, uh, but talk about like the start uh, of the trip. Cause you have all this energy and maybe anxiety. I don't know, but just you're, you're ready. Like, right. You're ready to go. Like talk about how that was that first day and how that all took place. It was uh, very exciting because we had uh, a couple guys, their equipment wasn't there, their flight was delayed. I mean, just thinking of all the things that had to happen to get us there on time, and it just happened. It was pretty amazing. And then when we got there, we were very excited. We knew, I mean, we didn't know what to expect. And I just remember the, the day before I was climbing up or walking up the stairs to my hotel room and I was out of breath. And I was like, <laughs> I was like uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Because the roof is at like, like 3,000 feet yeah. or 4,000 feet or something. And I was out of breath just you know, carrying my bag. And I remember the first day I was like, I'm going to carry everything. You know, I'm not going to let a guy carry my gear. So I carried the majority. Well, by the second day, I was down to the bare minimum. Yeah. They, the, I feel like we we're all in great shape, you know, with all the walking and everything. It's just the altitude is something, you know, that, that was uh, different. Can't plan for it. Yeah. Can't plan for it. Yeah. But it, it was so exciting. I mean, just the atmosphere and, and just the fun we had, you know, even though we, you know, we just it was the second day really as a group. Yeah. And everybody was just so excited. You know, it was very motivating. And the, the porters were the best. I mean, my goal, I think Raul and I said on the last day, our goal is to pass the porter because they're carrying like 70 pounds and we have 10 pounds and we're like, oh. Yeah. And they're like just <laughs> hauling by. So never last, never, 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 never. On the last day we did. We did. We ran yeah, yeah. just to pass yes, them. Yes. And, yeah. They start clapping because I don't think that happens often. <laughs> we showed them. We did. Yeah, for 100 yards. Yeah. <laughs> they did catch up. <laughs> you know what, on that topic of like taking off, they gave us that meal right before we went. And it was the first meal they cooked for us, right? And I remember thinking, this is pretty good food. I wasn't expecting that because half my bag, which was considerably heavier than most, was food because I was concerned I wasn't going to like, get, yeah, get enough calories in. And that first meal, I was like, oh, this is going to be okay. And the food got progressively better, right, yeah. as we went up. Yeah, I that mean, soup as, and everything else. As we lost oh. salt uh, in our bodies, the soups became better and better. Yeah. I, th I think we all so put on weight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they were great, great meals. Yeah. So let's talk about the, maybe just some memories, right? So, you know, our trip was a, it was a uh, four and a half up, one and a half down trip is what we did, to a full six days on the mountain. So in that time, a lot of memories, right? Like a lot of memories, a lot of stuff that happened. Um, maybe just, just talk about some of those, some of your favorite memories, maybe favorite day or favorite experience. Um, what, what comes to mind for you guys? For me, you know, the, as, as you're saying that, first of all, I mean, there's, like, there's just so many memories. Sorry. But what I loved the most about everything, anything we did, wasn't getting to the top, wasn't, it was every night we would get together at the mess hall and we'd you know, go around the table and we just got to know each other and, as men. And we got to talk about you know, who we are, what we believe in. And I thought that, I mean, that, that made my trip. You know, the, you know, to this day, we still have that text thread that goes through. It's amazing. It's a, it's a, this is a year later. <laughs> Minus key. No, no, he's on there. He he's on answer. there. You wouldn't know it. Yeah, but he, know. Is he, on, on he is on He changed his phone number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some other guy is getting these messages. I'm done with these but just, you know, everybody brought a, a message at one, one night, you know, whether, whether it's in the morning or at night, the word, and we, we just talked through something. I, I don't know. Just that, those memories, I just... Those are my highlights. Yeah. yeah. So. Good. Yeah, I think there's something about that mountain. It's 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 just majestic, to yeah. say the least. I mean, it's super spiritual. I don't know what it was. I mean, it, it, you're emotional. Um, it, it's great. But I think for me, the first day, it was awesome that it rained because you couldn't see anything, mm -hmm. right? So you had clouds. So you're like, okay, we're there, but you're not there because you can't see where you're going. Everything's fine. So you're just kind of walking this trail. And then it cleared up, 
And then you see that peak, and it's just like, oh, we're going there. It's like, okay. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's far. Above like, the clouds. <laughs> I felt like we started in Serengeti, yeah. <laughs> and we had to get yeah. to the mountain. Oh, it was great. Um, it's, like, it's just that, that feeling of, man, I'm actually doing this. That, that was, that's never going to leave me. Well, and they welcome you, right, that first yeah. day with the singing. Yeah. And if you're not ready for that, even if you are ready for it, because I knew they were going to do it, it, it doesn't compare. And then he's yeah. out there dancing, and <laughs> uh, yeah. he's out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the love of those guys, though, you know, you could tell that they were, you know, you, you, they become part of your team, too, because they really are. Without, without them, you're in trouble, man. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it, I, I just, the people, you know what I mean, outside of the group, but the... Just the, ten, the, the care and love and basically feeding of us to get to the top. And I thought that was um, really awesome. And obviously the com camaraderie with the guys. Well, and just the side that we had 13 guys on our team, but 71 porters. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. That were helping us out. This was, we're, we're exactly roughing it. Yeah. 71? Right? It's 71 porters <laughs> helping, helping us out. Yeah. It may be helpful for video purposes. To, we had 71, three of which carried a toilet. Right, we had a toilet at each of our campsites. Yeah, right, like, well, three at each of our three campsites. Toilets, yeah. We had three cooks or four. I mean, three cooks, four, four cooks, yeah. four us. Everyone carrying our gear up, and we were responsible for our bag. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It. So. And so they make you it. You make it sound so easy. They make it as <laughs> they make it as easy to climb 19,341 feet as, as you <laughs> as you can. That is true. Yeah. 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 And I, they don't leave. You leave before them every day. Yeah. They, they make sure they pass you. <laughs> yeah, they pass you. They so that you know, here's my bag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're right. The relationships you make with those guys. I mean, Danny, who was our lead guide. Um, Simba. Still in contact. Simba, yeah, the cook, uh, one of them. And it, it, that's extraordinary. I, one story that I just I, I think of, um, the summit night, right? And I had game planned this thing. I'm like, okay, there's switchbacks. That's the first third. Then there's a really tough you know climb that's the second third and then at altitude it's a gradual climb to the summit so third a third a third and we made it through the switchbacks <clears throat> and you know the team is you know starting to feel it a bit some are a little delirious <laughs> some are worse than that yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not naming these and uh, <laughs> and danny the, the lead guide he's like just go that's the top and i'm like what that this is the second third okay and it's the climb part and we get up there, and uh, they have, it's Stella Point, right? They've got the yeah. sign. And uh, Shep, Shep, Adam Shepard, yeah. he was the first one there. I think I was second. You were maybe right behind me on my tail. And the rest of the group was right there. And Shep turns around. He's like, Clem, we did it! And he's hugging and jumping <laughs> up and down. And I'm trying to conserve my energy because we got a whole other third to go. <laughs> and I'm like, Shep, man. We aren't there yet. Like, I thought, he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was right there. You and were that right, yeah. crushed me because I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, nah, man, we still got like a couple hours yeah. left, you know? I'm like, what? We're not there? Around the rim. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that was brutal. That was brutal. But shortly after that was when the sun rose. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's when you, you, you know you're going to make it, yeah. right? Like the sun's rising. It's up over the clouds, right? You can see the glacier. It is one of the most majestic yeah. scenes. Yeah, you really yeah. pin the, the word of the day, majestic, because yeah. that, that encapsulates what For it sure. was like up there. Sure. Yeah, it, it, it's, awesome. it's funny because... Uh, that new Lion King movie came out, the, and at the beginning they show the mountain, right. and I'm watching it with my kids, and I saw that. I got all of those feelings of that one day <laughs> when you see the clouds part, you see the mountain. I mean, I'm watching a kids movie, and I'm like, oh man, like I felt everything. Yeah. <laughs> so. But you know what's great about the trip? But and one of my favorite memories was really the only conflict that we had on, on the day uh, or on, on the climb. <laughs> Is we're climbing, we're going across the Arctic Desert, right? It's and day so three, right? Day three. Day, no, day, day four. Day four. Day four. Day yeah. four. The base camp. So we're climbing base the base camp, camp right? Yeah. So we're yeah. going from about whatever fourteen thousand to fifteen five, but it's forever long. Like that was an interesting part. I thought of the mountain. There's yeah. nothing out there. It's this desert, um, and we get about oh, I don't know, two thirds of the way there. And I remember stopping. We're talking. I've got him on video, and he's trying to talk. And at some point, he's like. 
I just, uh, you want me to stop? He's like, I can't breathe. <laughs> and he had to stop. Like, so we're starting to feel it, right? And um, so then we just kind of got into a zone. And I, w- I guess I was up near Danny, and I don't know. I think you were up there. And it was just kind of a, just, I was just kind of marching. And it was one of those things where I was just trying to, I was with Danny. Um, I was trusting my guide, and I was just trying to stay, stay focused. Well, to some of the guys that were on the, the, the back of the group, they were like, what are these guys doing up there? Like, why are they trudging ahead? And Dan was in that group. So when we had stopped so we could all finish together at the, uh, at the camp, and let's just put it this way, Dan had some colorful language uh, for... I can repeat it. Yeah. <laughs> for the rest of us. But I thought, first of all, I thought it was awesome because he was passionate about it and he was seeing things a certain way. And I loved that. Like, I loved that. But it also gave us an opportunity, or and it gave an, us an opportunity to do some reconciliation and be like, okay, what, what happened here? And I just thought that was, it was helpful because in life you go through conflict. Like if anything worth doing isn't easy, right? Anything worth doing, you're going to be presented with challenges. Um, and that was kind of a, cha- and I think we're all feeling the nerves of the summit. At least I was. I don't know if you were or not. Absolutely. Um, but I thought that the opportunity to kind of, you know, reconcile and, and be, all right, we all good here? And we were. And it's a great thing about being dudes, too. We just, we, we move on. Well, to, to, to that point, though, moving on was much easier thanks to Dan as well, because he actually took the time after the fact to go into each one of our tents and talk to us personally. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was great. Yeah. Yeah. I think oh. like, that's what the, the mountain, I'll, yeah, I'll let you go, but um, I think the mountain, like just like you said, there's so many parallels to life in those six days. There's so many things that you can look back and say, well, look, this, you know, I had a mentor that always used to tell me, how you do anything is how you do everything, right? And so what you do and how you present yourself and the things that happen internally, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally on that mountain, man, it just mimics what happens in life. And I came back a stronger man, a more faithful man, a better man because of what I went through in those six days. I can honestly say that, not only from what God did through me, but how he worked through the other men mm. to help me grow in that, on that mountain. So, so I would agree with that. Yeah, I, I think part of it was um, one of the guys on our trip, you know, had been sick for three days, and I just remember the night before, and I was just, you know, everybody was telling him not to go, you know, and, yeah. and he was going, and he was, he was struggling. And I just kept thinking, I was walking with him, I was like, you know, we got to push this guy, pull him, motivate and part of me is, you know, I've been in the Army, I always try to, you know, no man left behind. And, yeah. and we didn't really discuss that. It was just me going, hey, we need to pull this guy up. And, you know, that got the better of me. And I, I just remember that I, I'm so impressed with him, you know. And I think he drove me, because when we were walking up that mountain, and when we came down, I stayed with him. But walking up the mountain, I'm like, if he stays, I'm in it. Yeah. You know, I was just walking behind him. I mean, I, I love that guy, you know, he's, it was uh, every guy, every guy was different. And it was just, for me, it was great to have that try. You know, we have men, you go through bad moments, good moments, and there's no judging. You know, some of the guys got up and shared things that, you know, I was like, wow. You know, I think that's what brought us together, you know, and, and, and it just set such a great stage for the second week where you see people doing things without anything, you know, and that, that's really what, what was my biggest takeaway is I need that tribe, you know, that uh, the men that I can reach out when I have struggles, challenges, sure. and they know, you know, that I'm not going to have, have, I'm going to have bad moments and good moments, yeah, but right. that was, uh, it, it was special, you know, all 13 of us making it, thinking about yeah. <laughs> Well, the good, we the good part about yeah. that too is that we, we had, we huddled and said, what are we going to do tomorrow, guys? Right? Like if, if someone can't make it, I mean, Mark was struggling, Craig right. was struggling, um, and honestly, when we, because you hike overnight, right? For those who don't know, you hike overnight. And so you take off about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And we were about an hour into that hike. And Craig, I got my light on his face. He's not doing well. Um, and, Beyond not doing well. Like, and, uh, like not standing well. Like Mark is having to hold him from falling off a cliff, basically. Like he is, and I'm going... I don't think Craig. I don't think Craig. If making his it. wife is watching this, <laughs> it wasn't that. Should we cut it that part out? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff can cut that out. Uh, but we had said, hey, listen, you know, we're gonna make it up the mountain, right? And and so we decided at that point. But you had a really interesting thing with Craig. Like you got to tell that story because it it's just awesome. It's like, like leapfrog. How, yeah, yeah. So at that point, Craig, he the, just like you said, he was not making it. 
I looked at him, <laughs> and I, I just, we were probably, I don't know what the time was. Time frames are kind of yeah. vague. Yeah, kind of a blur. Was it 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes? I don't know. But we're there, and at some point, I just decided in my head, he is not making it. I have to move. If I don't move, I'm not making it. So I just went ahead and started moving. The group kind of started moving. So I don't know what happened. I'm assuming he left the group. He's going back the other way. And I keep on going. And maybe an hour later, I don't know, uh, I start to not feel so well myself. <laughs> <laughs> and probably two hours into the hike, I just start, you know, vomiting. And I, I would walk. I would vomit. I try to get some food down or some drink, some water down. And literally eight every 10 to 15 minutes, I would have to stop, it would come up, <laughs> and then I would have to get, so I got to a point where I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm not, I don't think I'm making it. Like, I'm looking at the switchbacks, I'm looking, I'm on the middle of the switchbacks, I, I know the next part's coming, and all of a sudden, I see Craig. And he's coming, and he's passing out me, <laughs> out of nowhere. And it was just like, like he was, at that moment, my savior on the mountain, because I was like, he just gave me something, and I looked at him, and I said, if he, what I, from what I saw, if he can move, I can move. And so that's what I did. I kept on moving uh, just right, right behind him. And then he would stop and kind of almost fall off the mountain. Somebody would hold him up. <laughs> so then I would go and I would throw up at the next rock. And, then, and we kind of leapfrogged each other like this. So come, you know, after all the whole mountain, we get down. I'm talking to Craig and he tells me the same thing. He says, I saw you throwing up every 10 minutes. And he's like, you're the one who got me up the mountain. <laughs> like, I saw that, and I was like, I was so inspired by what I saw in you. Yeah. That kept me going. And I was like, I echoed the same thing. And, and I was like, no, 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 it was you that got me. So that was, that was awesome, just to, just to have that. And like, to your point, you had that, uh, you know, that same similar experience. I had that with everybody kind of, when they needed something uh, or someone there, it was like that person was there for them. And then, and then that's just awesome, man. Yeah, and I think that it's the chains that bind us. Like, you know, the relationships that I have with all of you are much deeper relationships. You can't just get that by going to a men's group on Tuesday night. You know what I mean? You, I mean, uh, kind of going through battle together and just knowing, hey, look, you know, if any of you guys needed something from me, man, I'm going to be there. And I feel the same way about you, you know, vice versa. So... I think it was just awesome, you know, just knowing that you have guys who would be there for you um, during the tough times because, you know, life's not always easy. So. I, I got a question I want to kind of pose that to out there. So the mountain was great. Everything, you know, that was awesome. I, the people and the kids we served was awesome and a lot of impact there. But most of us have kids here. What impact did that have on your kids when you came? Because I know it impacted my kids and my family. So I don't know. Do you have, did you guys have anything with that? It's a great question. Well, I know for me, I carried Flat Stanley up um, for my son. And so getting Flat Stanley to the top of the mountain means that Flat Stanley went further than anybody else in his school. Uh, so that was cool, cool to have that piece of it. Uh, but I think, like, you know what's cool is when my, my son talks about, man, my dad climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. And he'll tell people that, like he's really proud yeah. of what his father has done. And, you know, as fathers, you just, I mean, you live in, breathe your kids, right? And um, so when you know you're having an impact on your family, and, and it's silly, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to know the impact that I had on him truly with this, but um, like even last night, literally last night a function he was at, he had on his Mount Kilimanjaro shirt and poly poly, and it, come, and it came up in conversation. And, and um, so I just seeing, seeing him be proud of me um, is something that, yeah, it's cool for me, but it's awesome for him too, to be inspired like that, so... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. For me, I'll make it very obvious. Um, we pray now, mm -hmm. and we, we didn't pray before. Yeah. So that, to me, was Dude. is huge. Awesome. Yeah. 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 All right. It's good. It's good. It's good. So maybe what we can just, I, I'm curious to know, what, what's, your, uh, what's your best memory? Or maybe, like, that one memory, or... In hindsight, like there's a lot of funny stuff that I think about. Like, what, what's the funniest thing? The fondest thing when you look back on it, you go, "Man, I love to tell that story." Or, yeah, I'll start real quick, just because it was the very beginning of the trip. Um, when, when we're getting checked out through all our stuff, Matt and I were in the same hotel room, right? And my wife will be the first to tell you that I'm more of a go with the flow kind of guy like I don't really pay attention to where we're going like we go on vacations I have no idea what we're doing she knows the whole plan she's got it all I'm like cool let's go um so it was kind of that way for this trip so I get there and Danny's like do you have this do you have that do you have that and I was like 
Nope. <laughs> I'm looking at his bed compared to my bed. I was like, oh, I am in trouble. Which, by the way, is the reason why I went up the mountain most of the days in shorts. <laughs> Truth comes out. <laughs> One pair of pants. <laughs> One pair of pants. <laughs> That was so, stinky pants. It was there. hilarious. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, for me, that's always funny to think about when I looked at his bed and then looked at mine and I was like, wow. I was like, this is way off. Yeah, they're like, um, Gonzo, you have long underwear? And he stretches out his underwear really long. He's like, yeah, I do. And they're like, okay. my, my Under Armour. I did. I was like, yep. <laughs> and then he's like, all right. All right. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. Yeah. <laughs> so that's mine. That's awesome. No worries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who else got one? Um, you know, I think when we were when we got to Uganda and we came and we came in and we're coming on the bus and you know you really start to feel like what a rock star feels like because you're pulling up and all the kids are like so excited to um, you know see you and then you're spending time with them and uh, you you feel the fact that, you know, like um, the kids have never been held, you know, a lot of them have never been held and what these kids go through on a daily basis. And then the, the warriors, the, 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 the Christ followers, the leaders of uh, Pastor Andrew and all the, all the support staff who just pour into these kids day in and day out. And the, um, uh, the soul, who these kids are, um, you see them, you know, packing up the one meal that they would get to bring back to their family. They don't eat the whole thing, you know. And um, coming from a society where we just consume, 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 and then realizing that, you know, that how far also the provision that Man Up provides goes over there is huge. You know, you feed 1,100 kids for 100 bucks. It's like crazy and then these kids um, are warm you know and you can just tell that they haven't been they just you know we were just so blessed um, and I think it was excellent perspective for me just to understand and, and see that and then you know you think you're giving like you're like oh I'm a giver you know and then, you're not <laughs> you're not like those people these people there's a difference between giving and sacrifice mm. and those people are literally sacrificing day in and day out to show Jesus to these young kids and it's amazing. So I, I, I thought that and being in the food line and, and, and was one of the most impactful parts of, of the whole trip for me. Yeah. You know? Just to add on, that, the thing I really loved was the kids singing in the porters. I have like 15 videos and I'll just put them on while I'm driving. I, I, mean, I love that, just you know, that, that portion. But my biggest takeaway for me really was, you know, I used to think, what can I do? You know, I have all these excuses not to do something and do things for me. And I think you go over there and we went to Uganda and you see what they're doing with really, really nothing. You know, just their faith and passion and just making a difference. And I, I think that's my biggest takeaway when I come back is, you know, I got to do something. I mean, because we had a chance, I got on video where you were talking to uh, one of the young uh, boys, or I guess was going through school and you, you know, uh, sponsored and you know just that concept of that job, one life you know through what you've done you know it really breaks the chain you know and I think for me that's always been I got to do something you know and and it was just great to do it with guys and and I think the idea of that you know with Christian men and hey you know we we get together we can accomplish some significant task you know just it's a vision and it's having fun and making it happen and you've been on fire since you oh, came yeah. back. I mean, this guy, you guys know it. I mean, he's serving, he's leading workout groups. Like, you, I've seen you grow in your face. I mean, I, I see the impact. Oh, it's, of it's, the, it's, it's yeah. one of my top trips ever. Yeah. I mean, just, it's just an awesome experience, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, so good. I, I, it's hard to think of just one memory on the mountain, yeah. right? Um, I mean, the, the oh, moment. Oh, I have one. Is it? And it involves this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you thought you were going to get away with it. I, right. I, I've got a couple. Um, the celebration when we got to the top, right? And half the crew had collapsed, right? The rest of us are delirious. The rest of us were going, pan to me. Yeah. Oh, wait, that was just you. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are delirious. <laughs> pan to the camera. Pan to the camera. But that celebration was awesome, right? Because it's the one you've... 
envisioned since, you know, watching the documentaries, seeing the videos, you know, all the stuff. It's like that's the moment when you get to go to the sign and see the sign. That yeah. was, you know, cool. And getting to celebrate with every one of us, you know, in different ways. Yeah. That was cool. I, um, I made a video, you know, for my, my family. <laughs> and I got emotional. And I was like, in the video, I said, now I see why... On that last documentary, that guy proposed to his wife that I made fun of for proposing to his <laughs> wife via video. I was like, it's emotional when you get yeah, to the top and when you yeah, get to accomplish sure. something with the team that you've done together. And then the next was when we got down, and I was in the last group that finished, and to celebrate with the team, and not just the 13 of us, right, but the other 71 yeah. that were with us, the porters, yeah. the guides, and have this celebration together was just a sweet, you know, sweet time, and get to pray together. Um, because at that moment, it was a miracle. Our whole team made it up. Yeah. It really was. So true. God's provision, yeah. and to give him the glory for the entire yeah. experience was awesome. Yeah. Well, I got to tell my story. Like the, For me, it's easy, because I, I, I play it you know, maybe every other day. I want to hear, huh! Huh! But so the funny part is that when I train with him 5 a.m., every once in a while, he gets this, like, dry heave like you know because we work out I hard. hard you know we were, no it <laughs> is it all out there. I go hard yeah and so I <laughs> knew that home, yeah I knew that sound uh but you know he 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 was struggling as as we as we mentioned earlier at the top and um I, he I kind of went down early we at the top and I went down there because he had to get out man he had to get because he was not doing so hot and so we're walking and it's snowing up there and I'm videoing him because he's kind of swerving, you know, kind of crawling. the right thing to do. Right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is the right thing to do. <laughs> it's the camaraderie. It's the I get it on guys. tape. I may lack empathy. I, I, I may lack a little bit of that. But I thought, this is going to be great later if he makes it. Right? We're, so, we're so glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> so Raul's going, right? And, um, and yeah, and then I get him up the steps, and he, I, I get the hook. On, on camera, which was amazing, but then we keep going, and he's trying to tell the porter, saying, you got to get out of this altitude, like, we got to go down, and, and he's like, and if you know Raul, best guy, right, like, of all of us here, he's probably the best guy at the table, and uh, nicest guy, like, just genuine and authentic, just a great dad, father, loves the Lord, like, just everything you want to be in a man, but he got belligerent, he got belligerent with, with the porter, and he's like, no, 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 we, I just, I need to take a nap. I just need to take a nap. I mean, it's eight degrees, you know, we're at 19,000 feet. And he's like, I just need to take a nap. I just need to lie down for a little bit. And the poor's like, no, you got to go, you got to go. Well, at some point, he pulled out. He's like, listen, listen to me. I'm a doctor. I don't know if this actually happened. It, I don't really know. The guy was at 31% oxygen. I, I think I'm qualified here over you to tell you what happened. But he did. So he pulled out his, his pulse ox later, and uh, he was at 31, which... You know, you should be at 98, 99. That's what we're all so at right close. now. So he was the only guy, only guy on the trip who, who got oxygen. And the funny thing is I'm watching him take this oxygen, and within two minutes, he's himself. Within two minutes, he's Raul again. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm good. Let's go. So wait, wait, again, was he still admitting he was a doctor? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he was, he was. But it's just like, it's just a great memory to me. Now, now we can laugh about it at the time. I was worried about him. And, uh, but to see the, knowing that too, that they had the oxygen, they had the supplies that we needed and he was good. So, you know, you're thinking about going on the trip, like we kind of exaggerate some things, but it was, you're fine and you're going to make it. And if you have the will um, and, and the mental fortitude combined with the camaraderie of the guys, and we've heard it all day, you know, talking about that, you're going to get through it. Like, there's no doubt about it. So maybe, maybe one last thing here, a question for you guys. Obviously, we're doing this. I think it's great for us to, to kind of share, but we're doing this to inspire others. So maybe the last question would be, why should somebody go on this trip? We're going to do it in February of 2021. Um, we're going to do this whole experience again with a whole new crew. Why should somebody go on this trip? Uh, I, I, for me personally, I, I think it's, um, it was, it's just a, a wonderful opportunity to grow in your faith, um, grow in your perspective about the world, um, and really you'll come back changed. You, as Raul said, you'll, if you're a husband, you'll come back a better husband, you'll come back a better brother, you'll come back a better leader um, because of um, you know, bonding with the men, but also seeing the circumstances that other people go through, and then the achievement 
of, of, of getting up there, you know, um, uh, on, uh, you know, both personally you'll grow, and then on the business side you'll 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 achieve more. It just it it just happens that way. So, um, it I I couldn't encourage anybody you know, any more than say, hey man, this is was the best trip of my life, and I would highly recommend you you, you spend the time and, and, and go do it. Dan, what about what about you? What what what's your what's your take? What's your advice to someone who's considering? Uh, for me, I mean, I would have never thought of taking two weeks off for work. You know, so I, for me, making the trip a priority, you know, changed my life in terms of what where my priorities were. So I, I you know, I'd say, well, it's a life changing uh, trip, but it was for me. You know, it really, you know, it made me re rethink my priorities in terms of, you know, because because I said, hey, I'm gonna do this trip, and then I had to fit it in my schedule, you know, and it wasn't work, you know. So I think. What, why I would recommend it is just because of the impact it's had on my life, my family, my faith. I mean, it's just, I, I want to go climb another mountain, not Kilimanjaro, maybe yeah. something a little higher, you know, something different. Something like Aconcagua. Aconcagua, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah absolutely. It, Rumor is we may be doing that. Rumor absolutely, is. Yeah. Absolutely. But it just, it'll change you. I, I just don't see how you can not go, go through that and it doesn't mm -hmm. change you. I mean, it was, it was just, she planned it out so well. What about you guys? Um, you know, you guys know this about me, but I grew up a believer and then through experiences in life, I stopped believing for a while. And about a year before our trip, I started feeling an emptiness, you know, something that was missing. And I actually talked to Jason about it and um, he brought me back. You know, he brought me back to church and uh, that, that's a great song, by the way, <laughs> you know, and, um, and that's how I got introduced to Man Up and Go. And when I started to read about Man Up and Go and what they've been doing, um, it just touched home so strong for me um, that I said, I, I, I can't say no to this. And to be fair, I read after um, Habitat for Humanities. <laughs> so... <laughs> So uh, on the way home, my wife's driving because there was wine there, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, I started reading about Man Up and Go and what I signed up for, and uh, <laughs> and I I'm, I am super glad I did because it was it was unbelievable. It, it honestly it's been life changing. Like I mentioned earlier, um, my kids and I pray together. Um, you know we. It's just, it's different, you know. Matt, you taught me about um, carrying a prayer book, you know, being open in your business world about, you know, believing in the Lord, and um, and that really has, has it's transformed me. And I can even say, like, just seeing how you, some of the stuff that we've interacted with on a business level, a personal level coming back, seeing those changes, you know, and they're, they're minor, but they're major, you know, and um, it's been awesome to see. I, I'm thankful that Man Up and Go is able to play some part or role in that. So thank you. Yeah, well, what about you? For for me, I think the biggest impact is it's the trickle effect, <laughs> right? It's like you do this trip, and yes, you're changed, but when you come back, that trickle effect of all the other people that are changed because you're changed. Right, and that's why I mentioned earlier. You know what what happened with the kids? You said the prayer happened. You know the people that you get to talk to now. Uh, people come up to you and they're like, they 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 know you you climb Killy, so that opens up the conversation. And why did you do that? And that leads to oh well, man up and go. That leads to orphans and widows. That that it leads to hey, where are you in your faith? Sometimes and the trickle effect. We won't know the impact this has. Sure. Like we'll never know, but the impact is going to be infinite uh, because of what happens on that mountain. And I think that's how God uses people. He uses situations. He does this one little thing, and you'll never know the impact that has for so many people down the road. So I think that's my big takeaway with this. It's like, yes, it was amazing for me. It was amazing for all of us. But my kids, the people I've been able to talk to, the conversations that were open, man, those are, that's where the, the true uh, fruit is seen. Yeah. I think we all thought that the climbing the mountain was going to be the aha moment or what have you, the, yeah. you know, the, the pinnacle of our trip, and it really wasn't. Yeah. For me, I, I think for the, a lot of the guys when I saw, you know, when we, were at, we went to the different villages, that was really the moment, you know, and yeah. it was, 
the idea of hey, we put to get, we came up with a, a you know something to climb up, you know, a, a, an objective. But then we went and saw the villages, you know, saw the kids, and saw the impact that Man Up and Go has, you know, in terms of what what these three different pastors have done is that for me was the biggest the, impact. Yeah. The spirit of the trip, right? Yeah. The first week being the physical challenge, right? Yeah. And the second week being the loving challenge. I yeah. mean, I thought that That's was. Right. That was amazing, and when yeah. that was presented, it was presented then. It yeah. wasn't presented prior to, but it just came up like, oh, I get it. And then to your point, when we pulled up on the bus and those doors opened, <laughs> and I mean, you're in shock, number one, but your smile has to be there, right? And you walk out with a fake smile, and it's immediate, it turns into a real smile. And you're just like, oh my goodness, like you feel their energy, you feel their love, you feel that they are in a place where they feel safe. You know, even though they're not, you know, they're within seconds of tragedy. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what those guys are, and women are capable of doing with all those kids. I mean. Well, listen, I, I really thank you guys for coming today and doing this roundtable. You know, um, for me, two pinnacles. One was at the top of the Nile River when we ate that barbecue. Um, <laughs> And forget about that one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, feeling so good. Yeah, well, three of us <laughs> lost our rings in the Nile River and uh, you know, it, but but seeing the guys like the way that we'd come through the whole trip and it was just an awesome way to cap that trip. But I was reflective in that moment of how you guys talked about the impact that man is having on in in Uganda, uh, particularly since we were there. Um, and especially how like the authentic masculinity program was helping um, to build up men to prevent future orphans. Because it's one thing to serve the orphans and the widows, it's another thing to prevent those orphans and widows from happening. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what Man Up is all about. And so that was a pinnacle moment for me to see you guys kind of see put everything together. You'd heard about it, but then to see it. Um, so I really thank you guys for coming um, today and for hopefully uh, for those watching this, you guys have been encouraged by it. Uh, and we're going again in February of, of 2021. We're gonna be climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, on our website, we've got sign-ups, so you can do that right now. Um, uh, rumor is we're going to be doing Aconcagua as well. So a small team to Aconcagua, um, and shoot, they, we can take 50 to Kilimanjaro if we want. So uh, thank you for spending this time with us, and God bless.